I spent a lot of time talking about amp modeling in the Axe FX3, but if we were to ignore the amp modeling and just focus on the effects, I reckon the reverb block is the most impressive. There are 46 different reverb types in the Axe FX3. However, there's a smaller collection of underlying algorithms, as you can see here. There's cathedrals, chambers, halls, plates, rooms, springs, and then a bunch of, I guess, effect reverbs like the Ice Castle, or the North Church and things like that, which are modeled on different spaces. But if you want to add reverb to your guitar sound and you're sort of wondering where to start, I wanted to give you a little guide to do this. I'm playing my YJM Strat at the moment. This is the dry sound with the Blues Junior and a bit of compression. So a sweet little clean tone, let's engage this reverb block and go to the types. A hint that I have been using a lot is to use this little pin feature. So engage that and then you can select different reverb types without the menu collapsing. The cab block and the amp block also feature uh, these kind of menus and I find them super duper handy. So let's do this. This is sort of my guide for picking a reverb type. What I do is start with all the medium types. So I'll start with the medium cathedral and then you can see we've got medium chamber, hall, plate, room, and spring, and they're going to sort of cover most of the common reverb flavors. Let's have a listen to how they sound. As you can hear, they're wildly different tones. Ideally, the spring reverb you would want to run before the amp. So I'm kind of going to exclude the spring from a lot of these because I'll do a separate tutorial on setting up a good spring reverb sound. Ideally, you want to run it before the amp. So out of all those types, I mean, you can hear that the cathedral is sort of, I would describe that as very lush. It's a really bright reverb uh, as opposed to something like the plate reverb, which is a little bit darker. And the room reverb, which is in no way, that's like a much smaller space as opposed to something like the hall. So there's a wide variety there. Let's say we wanted to go for something for this kind of sound. Uh, I really like the hall. So we'll start with medium hall. What we can then do is if we type hall up here, it will bring up all the different hall types and we can audition all the hall types. So this is kind of like a, like a refining process. For me, I liked the hall reverb out of all those medium types. And then what I will do is try to find my favorite hall reverb just at the stock setting. So I'll do the same thing and we'll start with these. I think I really like this music hall algorithm. So I'll double click, I'll unpin this and I'll select that one. Cool, we got music hall, beautiful. Then we can have a look at some of the fine parameters. So we can play around, what I normally do is just tweak the time in the mix more than anything else. So this is stock settings. <laughs> So if I was playing something kind of chordy like that, I would turn the mix down and probably bring the time down, say, to around 1.5 seconds. And we get this. Maybe I turn the mix up just a little bit. That's kind of giving it almost like a slapback effect there, uh, which is coming from the pre-delay. So you can also play, play around with the pre-delay. If I turn that down, we get this. 
or if I turn it up, it's going to give me more of that sort of slap back effect. I kind of liked it somewhere in the 70s. That was pretty cool. Uh, if you were playing something, I guess if you basically then the reverb mix is totally to taste, depending on the style of music that you're playing with it right up, you get this. And obviously you can turn the time up. I find with these hall types that anything over about three or four seconds gets a bit much. So for me, yeah, maybe somewhere around here that would just add just sort of enough to this sort of sound. Whoa, I don't want the time there. I want it about, yeah, about here. Beautiful. So uh, that's just kind of just adding enough vibe for what I would like with this kind of sound. Which is pretty, pretty sweet. Another thing that we can do, say I wanted more of that reverb mixed in, something like this. It is starting to sort of get a little bit too bright. So, what we can do is go in and use the EQ and bring the high cut down. They so bring it down to like 3K, you get this. Which I think sounds really nice. Another trick with reverb is to raise the low cut to stop sort of muddying up the low end. Uh, you can go... I'll sometimes go to like 200 hertz with this and it sounds like so. Yeah, that's nice. It's sort of just clearing it up and taking a little bit of the mud out. And you can probably get away with using even more mix in that case. Another parameter which is really powerful is the early reflections parameter. If you want sort of more of that, uh, I guess, to hear the shape of the sort of uh, space that they're modeling, turn the early levels up. This gives you a little bit more of that vibe. If I was going to raise the early level for that kind of thing, then I would turn the mix right down. Turn the early level right up, and this is basically uh, doing what the room parameter does in the cab block. That's another really cool little trick there. So, that's how I would go about dialing in a reverb from choosing the type that I want to choosing the specific algorithm to fine tuning it for the actual musical application that I was using. Uh, that's the whole type. Uh, obviously, we've got stuff like uh, plates and rooms and things like that. Probably my favorite room is this huge room, which sounds like this. I think that one is awesome if you could just kind of want to sort of cop more of that amp in the room kind of vibe going on with this uh, sort of thing, which is what a lot of people often don't like about using a closed mic guitar amp, which the Axe FX3 is obviously modeling in this case. So that huge room's really good. Uh, my favorite lush reverb is probably the Ice Castle reverb. This thing just, oh, just listen to this. If you turn the mix up, say somewhere in the 40s. <laughs> Thank you. 
That's amazing. Raising the low cut on that one, I think, really helps that out as well. If you like kind of sitting around and noodling on ambient stuff, the Ice Castle is amazing. Uh, two other ones which I think are great are the North and the South Church Reavers, which are apparently are based around like a Bracassi style thing. These just sound really, really sweet for guitar. And they're beautiful in that they've kind of got the that like really nice spacious element that the hall reverbs have, but they're not overly bright. They've kind of got more of like that plate reverb darkness going on. And the London plate, I think, is just an amazing sounding reverb as well. <laughs> I really like this with a bit of drive going on. Say if I kick in a tube screamer. We listen to that sound without it. And I find that bright reverbs normally work really well with clean tones, but they can be a little bit too much when you're using a distorted sound. So a darker reverb, like a plate reverb, or, you know, choose your favorite reverb and use the high cut in the EQ section to bring it down, you know, somewhere around two or three K. That can really, really help add some space to your distorted sounds. And this is kind of one of the tricks to getting like the Eddie Van Halen Brown sound, right? You know, uh, a big part of that sound is guitar panned, like left and then a plate style reverb on the right. So the London plate is just an amazing sounding reverb in the Axe 3. The huge room, the music hall, these are all my go-tos. Uh, there's another one, uh, the South Church I already talked about. And also these recording studios are really cool. If you just want to add a bit of roominess, like I said earlier, if I turn this off, let's try recording studio C. <laughs> And you can turn the early level up on that guy. I think that's really effective, even though it's quite high. You can turn it up pretty close to zero and it sounds awesome. Kind of gives you that effect of when you're sitting in the control room of the studio and you're miking up an amp, but you haven't turned the monitors on and you can hear the amp in the other room, which is a pretty cool effect. And then when you turn the monitors on and have them set quite low, you're getting a bit of this like bleed from the other room. So that recording studio C or A, whichever one you want, uh, you can also turn the time down a little bit, say below one second. And it just kind of, there's like a thickening effect to me. It goes from this. And of course, if we wanted like a slapback effect, use the pre-delay and get it at around hundred milliseconds. That one's super sweet. And of course, you know, the rich hall, which has been in the Axe 3 for a, for a long time. This has been one of my go-tos. If you turn the time right up on this one and use the reverb hold feature, you can do this sort of David Gilmore ambient thing that he does with uh, using a volume pedal and essentially creating this like infinite loop of reverb repeats. You get this. I better turn the time up. There we go.
That's a pretty amazing feature right there with the hold function. There's also modulation with the reverb. Let's pick a reverb type that I haven't tried yet. Let's try it. I was talking about the springs earlier. We'll take a large spring and I'll actually move it in front of the amp. And this sounds pretty cool. You get this. And this does the reverb drip thing. Which I absolutely love. So if you want to get into the spring reverb and kind of make it sound funky, what I like to do is you can add a bit of modulation in there. Uh, basically, yeah, turn the rate up and the depth up. And if we go to the advanced function, now we want to go to the spring function. You actually change the number of springs and the spring tone and the spring drive, which is pretty cool. It does this. That's cool, using the spring drive gives you like, uh, and the spring tone, you know, if we, I set the spring tone all the way up. I actually like to turn it up a bit and same thing, spring drive. Uh, turning up too far just kind of takes out some of the impact I find. I want to have that drip in there and then you can adjust the number of springs which is super fun and turning the modulation up as well. You can get it really, really drippy sounding. If you turn the mix down quite a bit, you get a far more subtle effect. I did say at the start of the video that I was probably going to look at the springs later, but, you know, I'm getting carried away. I'm enjoying this. So that is what you can do with the spring reverb to really tweak it and get it happening. Uh, in terms of other tricks with the reverb, you know, I would just encourage you, like I said at the start, find a reverb type that you really like the sound of and stick to that one and then try out all the variations on it. And then if you get sick of that, you can try a different reverb type. For example, if you like the hall, try the chamber or the cathedral for two sort of like riffs on that idea. Uh, for example, this is the medium hall. Whereas this is the cathedral. It's sort of like a bigger version of the hall and the chamber is like a slightly smaller version. And that's sort of where the party is at. Again, uh, I mentioned the stone quarry earlier. This is a great sounding reverb too. Again, a really dark sounding reverb there. I tend to like the darker reverbs uh, with the exception of the Ice Castle, which sounds super bright and super lush. So there is a really brief overview of the reverb block. Like I said, this is one of the deepest and the most impressive blocks on the Axe FX3. You can pretty much nail any reverb style that you like. If you want some of the non-linear reverbs, like say a gated reverb, you can combine a reverb with a gate block. And there's a couple of other cool tricks you can do like that, like, you know, sort of ramp up reverb and reverse reverb, but I will leave that for another time. Just in terms of the reverb tones, though, there's something for everybody in here. So if you either haven't experimented with the reverb block too much 
or you're just looking for some inspiring new sounds, hopefully this video has been helpful. It's just in doing this and trying out a bunch of them, you know, there's so many more that I want to go and try out. So yeah, thank you for watching the video. Be sure to hit subscribe if you like it. And yeah, go and make some sweet, beautiful music with the reverbs in the XFX3. I'll see you guys around.